What's up everybody? This is me, Saad Salim from Mathlete. Helping you do well in math, I guess. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well and uh, I also hope that you guys noticed the intro that I just made. And whatever your thoughts are on it, let me know in the comment section. Now, coming to this video, I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys to do a video on number sequences. So, here I am. This is a question that was sent to me by a student named Sahir on Instagram. Sahir, I hope you're watching this. So let's get straight to it. Okay, so the first four lines of a pattern of numbers are shown below. You can see that the first line is 3 square minus 1 square equals to 8 times 1. All right. Second line, 5 square minus 1 square equals to 8 times 1 plus 2. Hmm, interesting. Third line, 7 square minus 1 square is equals to 8 times 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay. Fourth line is 9 square minus 1 square equals to 8 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Now, I will always encourage you guys to study the sequence first before you solve anything at all, right? Because there are a lot of patterns that you can see that are hidden in the in this sequence below. Okay, so the question says that we have to write down the seventh line of the pattern. All right, so what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to study them column by column, all right? So as far as this column is concerned, we can see that in every line, the number increases by two, right? So we have the fourth line in which it starts off with nine squares. So that means if there was a fifth line, all right? So if there was a fifth line, so the number after nine following this pattern, where in order to get to the next term, you just keep on adding two. So that means the fifth line, I'll just write it here. So the fifth line is gonna have 11 square in the beginning. The sixth line is gonna have 13 squared in the beginning, right? And the seventh line, yep, you guessed it, is gonna start off with 15 square. So that means our seventh line of the pattern is gonna start off with 15 square. Now, as far as the second column is concerned, let's switch to a different color for that. So as far as the second column is concerned, you can see that we consistently have a minus one square. So that means irrespective whether you have to find the seventh column, the hundredth column, the nth column, we're always gonna have a negative one squared, all right? So, okay, now let's put an equals to sign. Now let's see what's happening after the equals to sign. Now in the first line, right, in the first line, we have an eight, which is being multiplied by one only, okay? In the second line, again, we have eight, which is being multiplied by the sum of one and two. Okay, interesting. Third line, we have eight again, which is being multiplied by the sum of one, two, and three. So third line, sum of one, two, and three. Second line, sum of one and two. Fourth line, sum of one, two, three, and four. Okay, and again, we consistently have an eight here as well. So that means there's no pattern to that. So eight is just gonna be carried forward. But if you're talking about the seventh line, so that means I'm gonna to have to add numbers from one to seven. So I hope I have enough space to do that. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Nope, I don't, that's okay, nothing to worry about. So plus six plus seven, all right? So here we have the seventh line of the pattern. I hope that's clear. Part B. Now part B, we have to write down in terms of N, an expression to complete the nth line, all right? Or the general term, in fact. So again, we have to figure out a pattern and that pattern should be in terms of N. Now again, let's just study the terms column by column. So as far as the first column is concerned, you can see that the terms were like three square, five square, seven square, nine square, 11 square. Okay, so if I just ignore the square for a while, I can see that this sequence turns out to be an arithmetic sequence, right? Now, why is it an arithmetic sequence? It's because we are consistently adding two to get to the next term, right? So two right here is something that we call our common difference. Now, how do you find the general term of an arithmetic sequence? Well, you do that with the help of our formula, and that formula is a plus n minus one times t. Now what's a and what's d? d is the common difference, which we can see is two, and a is the first term, which right here, whoops, which right here is three, all right? So we have three plus n minus one times two. So let's just, let's just simplify this. So this becomes three plus two n minus two. So this is gonna become two n plus one. Now don't forget that all these terms have a square. All right, so in, in our sequence as well, the first column is always gonna have a square. So it's gonna be two n plus one, the whole thing squared. 
Now again, we consistently have a minus one squared, so there you have it. We're just gonna write that as it is, all right? So here we have the nth line of the pattern. Now you may be wondering, this is just a one mark question, why do we have to do so much working? And yes, you're absolutely correct. There is a shorter way to do it, and the shorter way is, once you've established that this is an arithmetic sequence, such that you have three, five, seven, nine, and 11, all you gotta do is, you gotta figure out what your common difference is, and that you can see is two. You put an N next to it, and then you see that what do you have to add or perhaps subtract to get to three from two. So if, I, if I'm at two and I wanna get to three, so all I need to do is I just need to add one to it, okay? So I'll explain it again. So the first thing you do is you write down the common difference, which is two, which is two. You write an N next to it, and then you see what do you have to do in order to get from two to three. So you just simply have to add one, so you just write two N plus one. So here we have it, the general term of the sequence, and since we have a square on them, so square, 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 so I'm gonna square this whole thing as well, okay? So that's the first term of the nth line sorted out, and then, as I said earlier, we consistently have a minus one square, so there's nothing to worry about. We're just gonna leave it as it is. And as I said, we consistently have a minus one square. We can see it here, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And that's part B, done. Now let's do part C. Now part C is perhaps the trickiest of them all, and it's a good two mark question, which in paper two is quite a lot, because you barely have questions of more than three marks in paper two. So in part C, after using the nth line of the pattern, show that one plus two plus three plus all the way to n, whatever that is equal to, is equal to n times n plus one upon two. Okay, so basically what I have to do is, I'm just gonna copy the answer to part B down here. So 2n plus one, the whole thing squared, minus one squared is basically equal to eight times one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 plus n. All right, so that's what the nth line of the pattern is equal to. Now, what do I have to do? If you if you notice that if I have to show that one plus two plus three plus four n is equal to something, so that means I'm gonna have to make this the subject, all right? So I'm gonna have to isolate this. So how can I do that? Well, the first thing that I need to do is I need to expand these brackets, right? So let's let's start that. So two n plus one, the whole thing square is gonna be four n square plus four n plus one minus one squared. Right, and the rest of the terms as it is carried forward, right? So one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 plus n. All right, so that's that. Now let's just simplify the terms that we have on the left hand side. So we have four n square plus four n. Now one square, as we know, is one, so one minus one is going to get cancelled out. So I'm just going to leave us with zero equals to eight times again one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 plus n. All right. Now let's just create some room. If I have to make this the subject, that means I'm gonna have to get rid of eight from here. So how can I do that? I can take eight on the left hand side and if I do that, if I do that, I'm gonna have to divide it. So four n square plus four n upon eight is equal to one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 plus n. All right, now you may think that this is nowhere near to what we have to prove. So, and you're right, it's not, but uh, if you can think of taking 4n common, things are gonna fall into place. So 4n, bracket open, times n plus one over eight. Now four and eight here, right? This four and this eight here can be further simplified using the table of four, of course. So four ones are and four twos are eight. All right, so what do we get? So there's no point in writing one n, so I'm just gonna write it as n, so n, times n plus one upon two. Now let me just compare it with what we had to prove. that all we're done. So n times n plus one upon two is basically equal to n times n plus one upon two. All right, so hence proof. There's no point in writing that, but I kind of feel accomplished right now, so I'll do it. So that's all for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't. Until then, stay tuned. Take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.